Hey everybody. Last night in my live stream, I was mentioning a few things I do to save money here around in the fish room. And one of the things I said was that I don't use aquarium salt. I simply go out and buy table salt because it's the same thing and it's a whole lot cheaper. And I got a comment or rather I got a string of comments from somebody who took quite a bit of umbrage with that comment uh, saying I was putting bad information out there and how wrong I was and so on and so forth. And so today we're going to discuss the differences between what you purchase at the fish store that's called aquarium salt versus what you can buy at the grocery store that is considered table salt. And the long and short of it is there is no difference. Both of them are NaCl, calcium chloride. That's all they are. If you took some table salt in one hand and some aquarium salt in the other hand to a lab and said, tell me which one of these I got at the grocery store and tell me which one of these I got at the pet store, they would not be able to because to them they would be chemically identical. They are sodium chloride. Now, what this person was doing was they were conflating some of the common additives that you will find in table salt chiefly of which they were speaking about the iodine and so we're going to get into talking about that but first let me reiterate if you want to spend five dollars for 16 ounces of aquarium salt because you think you'd better play it safe don't listen to this guy you see on youtube that's fine you can go ahead and do that you can spend five dollars on 16 ounces of aquarium salt or you can go to walmart and you can buy 26 ounces of sodium chloride for 54 cents and you get a lot more and you pay 54 cents this is plain table salt there's no additives although there are some additives but we'll get to that at the end of the video because those additives almost don't even count they're so they again we'll get to that at the end of the video the iodine is what concerns most people and that's what we're going to focus on in this video first of all iodine itself does not occur in nature it usually occurs as a salt and it is usually in the form of sodium iodide that we will get it in our table salt when we buy iodized salt now back in the day 20 30 years ago when you went to the grocery store almost all the salts were iodized salt and and a lot of people do just equate salt or table salt with iodized salt. Nowadays, it's not really like that. When you go to the grocery store, you, you get your choice. There's a whole shelf full of plain salt that doesn't have any iodide in it, and it's just salt then you will see iodized salt. It's labeled very clearly that this does contain iodide. In fact, if you look at this one, it says right on the label, uh, this product is not a source of iodide, a necessary ingredient in your daily diet, etc. It's also a necessary ingredient in the fish's diet, but we'll get to that too. Um, so it's very easy to just buy table salt that does not have iodide in it. But if you do buy the iodized salt and you accidentally put it in your aquarium, do you have anything to worry about? No, you don't. The, the truest form or the purest form of iodine is iodine. And that to me, as far as I can tell, is the most toxic version of it. And when fish were subjected to iodine, they the lethal concentration was 0.53 parts per million now i know that does not sound like a lot but when you look at how much iodide is added to table salt when you buy iodized salt it is about 250 micrograms per teaspoon now thanks to google and a lot of complicated conversions and math and everything i figured out that uh, 250 micrograms is the equivalent of 0 0.00000025 parts per million. So you would literally have to put 2 million teaspoons of salt in your aquarium before you would get to a lethal concentration of iodide. Now, I think you could probably see the issue here is you're going to kill your fish with salt long before you ever come anywhere near the amount of iodide that you're going to have to worry about. Now, the studies I read with iodide didn't really seem to focus as much on the toxicity, but the difference between how iodine affects the animals versus iodide, and there is a difference. It's not the same. And again, I didn't get anything specifically that said the iodide is less toxic, but 
but in some of the studies, some of the parts per million were up as high as 10 parts per million before you got to a lethal concentration of iodide, whereas iodine was again 0.54 parts per million. But to the main point, there is so little of it in our salt if we buy iodized salt that it is just simply irrelevant. Fish need iodine in their diet. Seafood actually is a good source of iodine in your diet. If you don't want to get it from your salt, you can eat salmon, clams, shrimp, uh, kelp, seaweed, good sources of iodine. If you've got a reef aquarium, if you're somebody that you know is a reefer or whatever, you probably add iodine to your reef aquarium to make sure it stays healthy. So the tiny, tiny, tiny trace amounts of iodine that you would be putting in your aquarium by using iodized salt is absolutely negligible. It's irrelevant. You would kill your fish with salt long before you would ever get anywhere near any kind of toxic levels of iodine or in this case, sodium iodide. And so that's a concern a lot of people have, but it's really just an unnecessary concern. You really don't need to be worried about the fact that it's iodized salt. The thing that would always concern me about salt is even plain salt that's supposed to contain no additives whatsoever will still contain an anti-caking agent. And that was always what concerned me about table salt is aquarium salt will not have the anti-caking agent in it and table salt usually will. Even uh, the stuff I've got here, uh, it says it's just salt, there's no additives, but if you actually read the ingredients, it says right down at the bottom that it contains salt and yellow prussiate of soda. Now, yellow prussiate of soda is the least toxic of all of the type of caking agents that would typically be used in salt. There's three different types of anti-caking agents that are typically used. And the sodium prussiate of soda, or the yellow prussiate of soda, uh, whatever that is, again, there's, there's a chemical name for it. I've looked into this stuff before long ago. That's why I know I'm not, this isn't anything to worry about. Um, again, that is the least toxic of all of the three caking agents you can use. And that's the stuff they use when you buy uh, koshering salt. That salt is still has this anti-caking agent in it, but it's this yellow prussiate of soda is the anti-caking agent. And this is like a thousand five hundred parts per million or something before you get to toxic levels. The other two um, are sodium alumosilicate. That is the most toxic, and that is about 150 or 160 parts per million before you would get to a lethal concentration. And there's one other one that gets used, and it's like calcium oxide or calcium dioxide or something, and I honestly never even looked into the toxicity of the calcium dioxide because it probably doesn't really have any. That's probably not as commonly used as the yellow prussiate of soda or of the um, sodium alumosilicate. So... The sodium alumosilicate at 150 parts per million being a lethal concentration, when I tried to find out how much is in salt, I cannot even find out how much is in salt. There is so little of it in salt that it's just, I can't find out how much of it is in there. It measures into the doesn't even matter category, period. Like it does not even matter. There is so little of it in here that it is simply negligible. I originally started looking into something that is not used in salt, but it is an anti-caking agent that was used a little more commonly back in the day, and that is aluminum oxide. Now, Aluminum and aluminum oxide is pretty toxic to fish, but when I looked into that again Be clear. This is not used in salt, but if it were used in salt even something as toxic as aluminum and aluminum oxide it, it would still be just a negligible amount. It simply does not matter. There is so little of that stuff used in the salt that it just simply does not matter. And that's why even on the plain salt that has no additives or whatever, they can still say that because it's just simply a negligible amount. So the only thing that really would be a concern would be the toxicity of iodine. But as I said, you'd have to put literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tables or teaspoons of salt in your aquarium before you'd be doing any damage. Uh, remember, lethal concentration is not the minimum of where it becomes dangerous. That's the maximum. Lethal concentration means 90% or more of the test subject died within 96 hours. That's four days. So 
that's the lethal concentration. So you can imagine even half the lethal concentration would still be a significantly damaging amount of whatever we're talking about if you're you know, if you're talking about uh, iodide, if you're at half of what the lethal concentration is, that's still going to do a lot of long-term damage. I mean, just because it doesn't kill them in four days doesn't mean it's not going to kill them in a month or do a lot of liver damage or whatever uh, over the course of a year. So the lethal concentration, again, is sort of the maximum number of this is just what kills them. Whereas looking at more reasonable numbers, that's why I'm saying we're not even in the ballpark you're not even anywhere near it so if the maximum dosage is 2 million teaspoons is what the lethal concentration is you can imagine you can go way down to like one teaspoon is probably not going to be doing a whole lot of damage uh, to your fish so one teaspoon per gallon in your aquarium even if you have to use the iodized stuff it's just not going to be a big deal now having said that i also want to make it clear that plain salt without iodide in it is readily available everywhere you go you have to look for the stuff that has the iodine in it it's not just there in front of you it's not your only choice anymore so if you did accidentally buy it or if you're in a pinch and you really need to salt your aquarium like right now and you don't have time to run to the grocery store and all you have is iodized salt it's just not going to be that big a deal but i don't recommend using Using it just because you don't have to so why do it if you know I'm one of those people I do I have the same philosophy with carbon um, I have the same philosophy about a lot of things if it's something that's not going to give me any benefit yet there's even the slightest question that it may be some sort of whatever I who knows but if it doesn't give me any benefit if there's no real reason for me to use it then I simply don't use it and if I can just buy this salt that doesn't have iodide in it why would I buy the stuff that has iodide in it when I can just, you know, instead of doing this, I can do this and just pick a different thing off the shelf and I don't have to worry about the iodide at all. So true table salt to recap is just sodium chloride. It's exactly the same as what aquarium salt is. The additives that can get put into table salt, such as the anti-caking agents or sodium iodide, are put in there in such tiny, 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 tiny amounts that they're just negligible. They're just irrelevant. You don't need to worry about them. So I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are. Have you ever used the iodized salt before in a pinch? Have you always thought that was really seriously dangerous? Did you know that fish need iodide in their diet just the same way we need it in ours? It's one of those funny um, trace nutrients that we need that just a tiny little trace of it is the right amount and just a little tiny bit more and it suddenly becomes toxic because it becomes toxic to humans uh, in very small doses too. It's a very very narrow window is what the healthy amount is versus what starts causing thyroid issues and all sorts of other problems and the same for fish fish need iodide in their body but only in certain amounts so again it's just not anything to worry about having said that one last time just buy the plain stuff just just buy the plain stuff don't even worry about it but there you go those are all my thoughts i'd be interested to hear yours put your comments down below don't forget to do a live stream every friday and sunday night uh 8 p.m eastern time make sure you subscribe ring that bell you won't miss the notifications uh, or anything else i put out so thanks for watching this one i'll see you real soon in the next one